The G20 and all a lot of the big multilateral lending institutions and multilateral governance institutions, they're skirting away from land grabbing because land grabbing is a really, um, it's, it's a huge problem, it's multifaceted and people don't know how to combat it. What a lot of these organizations are preoccupied with is free trade. They want to see goods flow from border to border uninterrupted, unhindered. And that's just not compatible with land grabbing. If you have these organizations promoting free trade and promoting you know, the growing of monocrops, huge quantities of agricultural commodities to be exported around the globe with little barriers to trade, they're not concerned about peasant rights. It just doesn't fit into the equation for them. My name is Jennifer Natoli and I'm here presenting at the G20 People's Summit. I'm talking about land grabbing, global inequality, and climate change. Land grabbing right now is forcefully expelling farmers off the land. Um, right now you have farmers being forcefully kicked off their land and forced into internally displaced people's camps. Not only are they losing the rights to their food producing land, but they're also being placed in these camps where the living conditions are abhorrible, disease is rampant, there's no economic opportunity whatsoever. Whereas once farmers had the opportunity to be small scale subsistence farmers and produce themselves and take care of their family and possibly even have a little bit of excess food to take to market to sell, right now they're just completely reliant on food aid and handouts from the government. And the land that's being used is, um, or the land being grabbed, is being used to cultivate agrifuels and large scale monocrops. So, right now, it's in incredibly detrimental to the environment because we have loss of bio biodiversity happening. Food sovereignty runs counter to food security. It agrees with the fact that people deserve to have three meals a day, but it also incorporates the philosophy of culturally appropriate food. It says that people have the right to consume food that is culturally appropriate and more importantly grown within their own borders. Right now you have the majority of the food being consumed in the Global South is produced in the Global South. So food sovereignty says, if we're growing the food for the world, we deserve to have that food for ourselves as well. And the surplus is then able to go to market, not just we're going to grow the food and you're going to take it all and we're going to perish.